What on earth are you doing now, Daddy? Today, I'm going to be doing a bit of skull carving. I've got this lovely block of um, kingwood, which is a South American hardwood. And uh, it's a precious little block of wood, and I've been saving it for doing a, a little carving. What I've done is I've squared it up and got rid of the wax on the ends and uh, I'm now gluing a waste block onto the bottom using some quick set epoxy resin. Just neatening up the edges and uh, now using some spray man which I spray on a piece of paper and then roll that around the wood and that lets me mark it out. I'm marking out the block or the part of the block I'm going to use and I've part cut through it with the bandsaw put a pilot hole in the waste block which will help me hold it later now I'm doing a bit of basic marking out so it's roughly marked out then it's onto the bandsaw just uh, cutting away as much waste as I can on the bandsaw and this wood is even difficult for the bandsaw to cut you know it's quite hard work I'm just getting rid of as much waste wood as I can without risking cutting into the, the wood I need there he is, ready. And I'm mounting it onto a wormwood screw, which is on me uh, on me Robert Sorby chuck, which is attached to Simon Hope uh, carving jig, which is attached to my lathe. This gives a lovely firm base. I'm starting to cut with my flex cut roughing knife. I don't know if you can see it here, but there's loads of little chips out of the edge, tiny little nicks, and I like it to be smooth and mirror finished. It's this wood that's doing it, it's so hard. What I'm doing is removing all the corners and edges to get it nice and round where I need it round. And there it looks a little bit like C3PO or Bender or Future Armour, I'm not sure which. Just taking little cuts at a time, and it's such hard work. Unbelievably hard, this wood incredibly dense as well very very heavy piece of wood and I'm regularly stropping the knife to keep it sharp I'm using stop cuts where you cut in one direction and then in the other direction to meet up with your first cut this stops you splitting the wood and over cutting I'm just taking it bit by bit by bit I could carve a skull from memory really I've uh, done a few and uh, I know the basic anatomy um, but I always have some reference papers with me with uh, sketches of skulls on just uh, you can get a bit lost in yourself sometimes doing these carvings and it's quite useful to keep uh, keep pictures in front of you so you can keep tabs on where you are and what what should be where Just uh, loads and loads of little cuts, but I'm getting a bit fed up with this at this point. It's just taking too long, and I'm spending more time sharpening than I am actually carving. So I've switched over to my Dremel with a round carving burr on. But as you can see, this is smoking. And it's because the burr's a bit blunt and I'm putting a bit too much pressure on, there's too much friction. So I've changed burr, taking lighter cuts now. There's quite a lot of oil in this wood and it will smoke very easily if you get it too hot. But just take your time so you're not overcutting. That is the one advantage of a hardwood, that it, you don't overcut it quite so easily. And you will, of course, get a fantastic finish on it because it is rock hard. He's working on his uh, on the orbits there where the uh, eyes go, the eye sockets. You can see I've got my respirator on. Um, some of this wood dust from these rosewoods, particularly, can be quite irritating and very fine. I'm using my flex shaft on the Dremel. I'm part of the way through my skull project and uh, this wood is very 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 hard um, and it's just chipping the edges on my uh, carving tool so I switched to power carving and uh, the good news is with if you're doing some carving and the wood isn't 
easy to carve with hand tools it usually makes it very suitable for power carving because of the density and the hardness of it means it doesn't uh, you, you can't overcut it too quickly or easily um, and you get a nice finish on it but he's coming on just gradually shaping this and uh, I'm using my Dremel which is hanging up on a bungee and it's got a flexi shaft on it uh, and it's being controlled by some of you may have seen this before but uh, I've got a foot pedal a heavy duty industrial foot pedal and it's in the middle of an extension lead that I made up um, and the this goes between the mains electricity supply and the Dremel and so to turn it on and off I use my foot which is much easier especially when you're using a flexi shaft back to power carving now I've removed it from the uh, chuck now so I'm hand holding it and you really need to leave the uh, your carving attached to the main block of wood for as long as you possibly can because it gives you something to hold on to gives you a lot more control and makes it a lot easier it's a lot easier on your hands really as well because gripping little objects to carve gripping them tightly for a long time is, is hard going on your hands so like I say, I'm trying to do as much as I can with it attached to the main block and the waste block. And here I'm uh, just smoothing out all the bumps and creating the correct contours, getting the cheekbones or the zygoma in the correct shape. I'm using a variety of different burrs. Just marking out the mandible. using small round burrs for a lot of the detail and larger sort of pear shaped burrs and flame burrs for the other bits. If you get the smooth fluted burrs they're very good for rounding off. But then it's time to do a lot of sanding. I tend to stick with the finer grades, uh, you don't want to put any deep scratches in at this stage. But what if you buff it on a buffing wheel it will show up any blemishes and dents. And this wood buffs up really well because it's so hard. But the best thing is uh, buff it and see what dents there are. Sand it, try and sand out those marks. Buff it again and by doing sanding and buffing and sanding and buffing you'll quickly spot all these little imperfections and get rid of them. It does take a long while though. And really with this sort of carving you really want it to look you know, very smooth and well presented it's kind of in the uh, Netsuki style of carving spelt Netsuk um, which is uh, sort of Japanese um, miniature carvings and they're often characterised by a you know, very smooth finish awesome bit of wood though beautiful grain here I'm just uh, shaping the mandible. Now the maxilla, a bit more sanding. What I'm doing here is just putting a slight key over the surface so that I can then pencil in the details. Now I've marked in a few of the details, teeth and uh, the uh, sutures on the skull. I'm using a very small round engraving type but uh, here for putting the little zigzag sutures across the, uh, the cranial bones. Just going across there and now marking out the little uh, fissures and framini in the, the bottom of the eye. Using some Robert Sorby palm chisels here. But I was struggling even with these. These are lovely little tools, but. Uh, this wood is just so hard, using a little skew there, a little palm skew. And I found in the end that the best tool for doing the teeth was a flex cut chip carving knife. 
which you can see in a bit more detail here. It's a strange looking little carving knife, but these, um, these chip carving knives are absolutely brilliant. And you, what you're doing is carving little chips out. You're doing little stop cuts and removing little triangles and pyramids of wood. And these teeth are tiny. You can see by the size of my fingers how small they are. I'm now using a pyrography tool, the Peter Child pyrography kit, and I'm burning in some of the details here. This not only highlights the details, but it also removes any sort of fluffy bits of wood, you know, if you get any loose fibres around the edge of where you've been uh, cutting out. And it burns those away, leaving a harder edge. Just defining the teeth. Go. just sanding to get rid of any uh, marks that the smoke leaves cutting it off using a saw that's way too big but I couldn't find my nice little Japanese pull saw and there it is free from the main block break away that little excess bit and these are sabre tooth um, burrs these spiky burrs or uh, doohickeys as Bobby Duke would call them and these are fantastic they remove um, the stock very quickly uh, although it was still a slowish process with this wood because it was so hard you do have to be careful with these because this is these are the coarse ones and they can leave a rough surface so uh, just bear in mind where you're going to be finishing to so, and stop slightly short of it and use a, a finer burr there we go. A bit more buffing. Nearly finished my little skull. Um, I soaked it for a few minutes in uh, Liberon finishing oil um, yesterday and then wiped off all the excess and let it dry overnight. So I'm now going to do some more buffing and that should bring it up to a sort of finished shine it's pretty good as it is but I really want to get it like a fresh conker here I am back at the buffing wheel using some Vonax polishing compound and giving it a good old buff up so it's all nice and shiny just keep a firm hold of these little things when you're buffing because if that buffing wheel grabs it it will chuck it all around your workshop well here's the tiny little skull all finished all polished up and gleaming really pleased with that well that's my uh, Halloween offering for this year hope you like it thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed the video very difficult to film uh, unlike um, with wood turning where it's in a fixed position on a lathe when I'm wood carving I'm moving in and out of shot all the while and the focus keeps changing and uh, and it's a very, very long process. This tiny little skull has taken me many times longer to do than a great big bowl on the lathe. Um, and uh, it's funny, people don't really attach the same value to something like this. I, I do, because I know how much work goes into something like this. But uh, yeah, a big impressive bowl and a little tiny skull, you know, but this took more time. Beautiful wood, absolutely glorious wood. Don't forget to check out my Halloween playlist I've uh, put on my channel. And it's got a few different sort of skull-like projects and um, pumpkin projects. But uh, I'll be back soon with some uh, some more videos. I'll do some close-up shots of this, so uh, don't worry, you can get a good look at it. Thanks for watching, folks. And here it is, the finished article. Very pleased with that. It really is a gorgeous piece of wood. Now, don't forget to uh, have a look at my channel because I've created several playlists, you know, milliput playlists and wood turning playlists and uh, casting. And like I say, I've done a Halloween one as well. And I'll put links to all of that in the description. But please like, share and subscribe it costs nothing to subscribe give me a old thumbs up because it all helps it helps me out a lot and i shall be back soon with some more videos 
There's a few shots of the old scully. And uh, I'll hopefully be doing a bit more wood carving in the future. More rubbish coming soon. Try and put a link to the Halloween uh, playlist in the description. And uh, don't forget, make us central next year uh, in May, 11th and 12th of May um, 2019 at the NEC in Birmingham. Check out the website, you can buy tickets and even book a stand there. <laughs>